you might be thinking this is kind of a silly experiment. You might be thinking, well, I already know what's going to happen. I can tell you. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Tuesday, March 19th here in South Georgia, and it's been just a little over a month since we planted these potatoes here behind me. So on today's video, we're gonna check on our in-ground and our raised bed potatoes, see how they came up for us. Gonna talk about healing potatoes, why we like to heal potatoes, and we're gonna start a fun little experiment to see if healing really matters. So let's start off with our in-ground taters here. We got three 30-foot rows, three different varieties from Wood Prairie. We got the Baltic Rose, we got the Huckleberry Gold, and we've got the Sharpo Mira here on the end. And as you can see, most of these came up pretty well. We're starting to get a nice full row for all three of these varieties. Had a few late arrivals to the party. That one there is just starting to peek out of the ground. And here's another one on this row. Just starting to come up. But before too long, we'll have a nice lush full row of tater plants. And then over here in the raised bed plot, these are looking even better than those in-ground potatoes are. I can't remember exactly which varieties we have planted in each of these long skinny beds. I wanna say this bed here has purple viking and then some leftovers from those in-ground varieties. And I think this bed here has charlotte and rose gold in it. Now what's actually kind of crazy here is those in-ground taters actually emerged before the raised bed taters did. Probably because we planted those raised bed taters a little deeper than we did in the in-ground plot. But once the raised bed taters emerged, man they took off and they're significantly larger than those we have in the in-ground plot. So the fast growth on these tells me that these plants really like what we got cooking as far as our soil mix in these raised beds. Before we planted these potatoes, about a couple weeks before we planted them, we added some mushroom compost, some worms and worm castings from our worm farm, and some of that coop grow fertilizer. Now we also added compost, albeit a different kind, and coop grow for these in-ground taters here, but we didn't add the coop grow fertilizer ahead of time like we did in the raised beds. So that may be why we're seeing the differences in growth here. In the raised beds, we added that pre-plant fertilizer ahead of time, gave it time to start breaking down, and so it was able to feed those plants a little faster. And as far as our potato growth timeline goes, when these plants get about six to eight inches tall, like they are now, that's when we want to feed them once again. We want to give them a little bit of side dressing of a balanced fertilizer, and we also want to heal these the first time. Now there are many reasons we like to heal our potatoes. I can think of five good ones that I'll share with you here. So number one would be in row weed suppression. If we put more soil around those plants, we suppress any of those tiny weeds that might be popping up along the row there between our potato plants. Number two, healing makes side dressing easier. So like we'll do in a minute, we'll put more of that coop grow fertilizer alongside those rows of potato plants. And then when we heal the plants, we cover up that fertilizer, basically kind of mixing it in the soil. Number three is gonna keep our potatoes that start forming from being exposed to the sun and turning green. So if we get some heavy rains, it may wash away some of that soil. We may have little bitty taters poking out from that soil. They get hit with the sunlight, they'll turn green and we don't want that to happen. So keeping soil mounded up there, is gonna keep those potatoes from being exposed to the sun. Number four, healing is gonna help add nutrients for those potato plants to use. So we like to think that our soil here has a decent base nutrient supply in it. We push that soil up around those plants. They form roots into that mound there and they can then use those nutrients we've worked hard to accumulate in our soil. And number five, I believe healing potatoes gives you more production. If you look at the way potatoes grow, we see that potatoes are gonna form above that little seed piece that we put in the ground a little over a month ago. So if we've got more soil there for those potatoes to form and develop in, we should get more production. 
However, believe it or not, there are people out there, I know this because they comment on our potato videos every year, there are people that believe or say you don't need to heal potatoes at all. That it's just wasted effort, a wasted extra step, and it's not necessary at all. Now I don't know this for a fact, but I'm gonna guess and assume that the same people that don't believe in healing taters or say it's unnecessary or might be the same people that believe that sticking a copper rod in your soil is gonna give you some incredible results. But that's neither here nor there. This year, we're gonna actually do an experiment and compare healed taters versus not healed taters. And probably in about 60, 70 days or so, we'll be able to tell if it really does make a difference or not. Now I have been tempted to do this experiment in previous years, but I believe in healing taters so much that I didn't want to sacrifice any production by leaving a piece of a row unhealed. But I think we've got enough planted this year, we can sacrifice a little production, so we're gonna give it a go. So we're gonna do our little healed versus not healed tater experiment in this in-ground plot with one of these rows. I'm not gonna do it with this row right here because Baltic Rose is my absolute favorite variety. Also not gonna do it with this middle row because Huckleberry Gold is a close second to Baltic Rose in my opinion. Gonna do it with Sharpo Mira here, which is another great variety, but not quite as high on my list as those two there. So this is the row we're gonna be using for our experiment. So we've got a 30 foot long row here. Got my tape measure out so we could cut it in half. And it looks like 15 foot is right there. So we'll make our dividing line between those two plants right there. We'll heal these on this side and these over here we won't heal. And so each half of this row of Sharpo Mira potatoes will receive the same amount of fertilizer, the same amount of water. The only difference is one half will have soil mounded around the plants, the other half will not. And so what we'll be looking at here in about 60 or 70 days when we dig these potatoes is looking at the weight differences of yield between the healed row and the not healed row. If it's only a couple pounds difference then we can say healing doesn't really matter but if we get one and a half times or two times as many potatoes by weight from the healed row then we can say yes it does matter. So to kind of get this all going the first thing we need to do is just side dress all these potatoes like i said they're all going to get the same amount of fertilizer when you're side dressing potatoes anything relatively balanced will work well this coop grow has a three three four so that's what we're going to be using here now i normally do a whole one of these per 30 foot row but for the purposes of this experiment we're going to do a half of one of these for the healed row and another half for the non-healed row. I'm gonna measure it out in halves. That way we make sure we get the same amount on the front half versus the back half of the row. So let's go ahead and put that in there and we'll see how much we got. And we'll know to give the other half the same amount. So now we just wanna sprinkle this right alongside our row of tater plants here. If you wanna get really ambitious with this, you can side dress both sides of the row, but today we're just gonna do one side of the row. So we're just gonna start sprinkling here till we get to our half line down here. And there's a little halfway marker there, so we're gonna give the exact same amount to the second half of the row. Now for this second half that isn't getting healed, some might yell sabotage if I didn't at least mix this fertilizer into the soil a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little scratcher tool here and I am gonna lightly mix that into the soil just to be fair. And then back on the first half of the row, we're gonna heal these like we always do. We can see our dividing line once again right there. Just gonna take this large garden hoe and we're gonna pull soil up around these plants. We don't want to cover these plants completely, but we do want to get soil nice and snug up around those plants. I'm just gonna lightly pull soil on that side and then skip over to this side and we'll do the exact same thing. Now that we've got this healed, we don't really need our line there anymore because we can easily tell what's healed and what isn't. 
Now as we're healing and working our way back to the beginning of this row, we are going to have to be careful in a couple spots, kind of skip over a little bit, like right there, where that little bitty plant is just now emerging from the soil. Probably don't want to cover that one, so I'll skip over that little spot. And then right here, you know, we might have a seed tater that never comes up, or we might have one that eventually does come up, so I'm probably not going to mound dirt right there. But most of the row where we have plants here is going to get healed all right so now we have our experiment set up as fair as i can think to do it you can see with some of these just how much dirt we pull up around them just leave a few leaves poking out there but you can cover a vast majority of that plant just depending on how much soil you have there available to heal with all right, so now that that row is set up, we just need to do our standard protocol on these other two in-ground rows. So a whole scoop of coop grow per row, and then we'll get them healed up nicely. All right, so our side dressing and healing is complete, minus that half a row of Sharpo mirror that we're leaving. Now this won't be the only side dressing and healing that we do. Once the plants outgrow these hills a little bit, we'll side dress them one more time, heal them up high one more time. We'll fertilize those that we're leaving over there. We just won't add any soil to them. Now over here in these raised beds, we're gonna to have to do things a little bit differently because these taters are planted so thick and they're growing so fast. And my soil in my raised beds is almost all the way to the top already. So probably later this afternoon or tomorrow, what I'll do is I will sprinkle some coop grow amongst these plants here as best I can. Probably get me a couple bags of mushroom compost and just try to kind of work it around those plants. Give them a little bit of extra soil to work with. We're not going to be able to heal these real tall, but I am going to try to add some soil there. So let me know in the comments below if you're a heel or no heel type of person. And if you've been growing taters for a while and you always heal them, you might be thinking this is kind of a silly experiment. You might be thinking, well, I already know what's going to happen. I can tell you what's going to happen. And I've got my own hypothesis as well, but we're going to give it a fair shot with the no heel portion of that row and see what happens. I'm interested to see just how big a difference if any there is between those two halves of the row and if you haven't gotten your seed potatoes already you can try some of these varieties we're growing by going to woodprairiefarm.com be sure to use the code lazy dog farm to get five percent off and if you want to know more about our pre-sprouting process that we do so our seed taters kind of hit the ground running watch this video we'll show you the whole dark and light process to get those sprouts up and going on those seed potato pieces so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm